Uh, all right, folks. Um, first off, I have to apologize. I kind of got a wee bit ahead of myself in the last video. If you're watching these in order, if you're not watching them in order, then <laughs> that makes no sense, um, which is totally fine because you're probably used to that by now because we're just a little bit weird. Uh, anyway, so really what I'm trying to get at now is um, we're really trying to go back into Skinner's uh, radical behaviorism because I was really talking about experimental analysis, al analysis of behavior in the previous video, but what I really wanted to do was I just get so damn excited about these topics and they all connect together and I can't stop. I just have to keep talking. So we're going to refocus a little bit and talk about Skinner's radical behaviorism here. And we're going to, we're going to kind of go over what some of those details are. Um, and what we're doing here is an example of what Skinner learned. But anyway, that they'll let you figure out why that was funny. Um, <clears throat> so radical behaviorism. Okay. First off, during the time that Skinner was writing about his stuff, he was, he'd had enough of hypothetical constructs in this whole thing called mentalism. Woo! Uh, mentalism would be, well, how do I know um, to do what I do, right? How do I know to walk down this path and do this particular thing um, and make these sorts of decisions and blah, 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 and all this fun stuff? Um, what must be knowledge, right? Knowledge is an explanatory fiction. It's a hypothetical construct. It doesn't explain anything. It doesn't add anything new to our understanding of what's happening in this particular context. Um, so an, an explanatory fiction, right? So if you're in the mentalism field, or if, you're, if you believe or think like a mentalist, a mentalist, what you will think is that using a term of an inner, some type of inner state or something like that, will then explain behavior. They're intelligent. He has this knowledge. He had this feeling, that feeling, and caused this and that and the other thing and all these different stuff. Now, most of what I'm saying is probably gonna be like, familiar to you because it feels right. The problem is, is Skinner didn't buy it. He didn't buy hypothetical constructs. He didn't think that that added any extra level of explanation to the understanding of behavior. So he went, psh, he killed it. He said, uh-uh, we're going to take it out. We're going to take that stuff out. Now, where it's different, I've kind of got to the point of describing to you methodological behaviorism, which is where anything that's not observable doesn't count. We're not going to study it in science. Okay. So I've kind of explained some of that already. That wasn't really my core intention. I really wanted to get into radical behaviorism, but methodological behaviorism is about that understanding of that, that we don't study anything that we can't directly observe. Um, and we throw out things like thoughts and all that stuff and feelings and anything that's inside the head and thinking and all that stuff. Well, Skinner didn't buy it. He didn't buy methodological behaviorism either. And you're probably thinking that, what the heck? Skinner didn't buy into any of that stuff. Yes, he did, folks. Do your history, read a little bit, figure out that Skinner talked about all of these wonderful things that we're called thinking, feeling, emoting, all of that stuff that goes on inside the organism. Skinner didn't disagree that it was there. What he did differently was he called it behavior. He made that stuff into a studyable, scientific um, topic. <laughs> that was what was cool. That was what was radical took away the hypothetical constructs, which is similar to methodological behaviorism, right? And then the end result was that he added back the stuff that was hard to see. He's just saying, Skinner's literally just saying that just because I'm the only one that can observe it doesn't make it less valuable. It just makes it hard to confirm that other people see it too. It's still behavior though. So we treat it as behavior in its own right. It still has to be explained. Thinking has to be explained. Feeling has to be explained, right? emoting, having my emotions, right? That has to be explained. All of this has to be explained to have a thoroughgoing understanding of behavior. Skinner recognized that, and that's why he created his own, right? That's one of the reasons. Anyway, that's one of the reasons he created his own thing. No explanatory fictions, no hypothetical constructs. We're going to reject methodological behaviorism, and we're going to focus on uh, just understanding the environment's relation with behavior. That's it. That's radical behaviorism in a nutshell. There's lots of great books about it, and I'm sure you can read more. You could probably pick apart some of the things that I said. Oh, well, go ahead. Engage me down here. Engage Brad down here. We'll chit-chat with you in the comment section. Ask some questions. I've probably got a lot more to say about the topic. Anyway, we'll talk to you again. See ya.